about the Hubble constant and the Hubble time. Uh, the Hubble constant is a very important constant in astronomy. We plot a graph of velocity versus uh, distance. So the Hubble uh, uh, constant is the slope of this graph. So it ends up being more or less a straight line. So uh, Hubble discovered this when he was doing his uh, research on galaxies, that the farther away a galaxy was, the more redshift the galaxy was experiencing. And uh, I'll talk about that in another video, the Doppler shift of galaxies. And so uh, we call this now the uh, button balloon model. If you take a balloon and you put a bunch of buttons on it, and then you blow up the balloon, the farther away a button is from another button, since there's more balloon between the two of, uh, buttons, there's, there, the buttons are gonna be moving away from each other at a quicker, quicker pace. So there's more space between them. So these two galaxies, uh, if these represent galaxies, they're gonna be moving away from each other at a quicker rate than these two galaxies when they are close to each other. So you could also uh, think about this as a raisin pudding model. Take some cake and put some raisins in it and then enlarge as the raisin, as the pudding is enlarging, getting bigger, 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 the farther apart the raisins are from each other, the quicker they're gonna be expanding away from each other. So it ends up that if there is Tw uh, twice the distance, if uh, two raisins or two buttons are twice as far away, they're going to be moving away from each other twice the rate. If they're three times farther away, three times the rate. So it ends up being a linear relationship. And if we measure this in kilometers per second, with the distance, we're going to be able to measure it in usually light years, parsecs, mega light years, mega parsecs. So what we do is the common one is mega parsecs, okay? And the slope of that is the Hubble constant, so it ends up being an equation V equals HD, okay? V equals HD, where this is like an equation like Y equals MX plus B, where the Y-intercept is zero, okay? So every galaxy looks like it's moving away from another galaxy. So there you can't really say that any point in space is the center of the universe because everyone else thinks that every other galaxy is moving away from it. Okay? So when the distance is zero, the velocity is zero. That means according to the Milky Way galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy is actually steady, is standing at rest, and every other galaxy looks like it's moving away from it. So when the velocity of is, uh, the distance is zero, the velocity of the Milky Way is zero, okay? Um, if the distance is one million parsecs, okay? So let's say this happens to be one million parsecs, mega parsecs. The velocity is whatever is given by the Hubble constant. So right now the Hubble constant, more or less, the value of the Hubble constant is 71 kilometers per second per mega parsec. Okay, 71 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So if a galaxy is one million parsecs away from us, remember in the lecture I described what the parsec is in relation to the light year. One parsec is 3.26 light years. So if a galaxy is one million parsecs, one million parsec, it's going to be 3.26 million light year. So that's what we mean here. One million parsec, how fast will it be moving away from us? It'll be 71 kilometers per second. If the galaxy is two million parsecs, it'll be moving away from us how fast? Double that. 142 kilometers per second. 
If it's 3 million parsecs, it'd be moving away from us at three times that, 213 kilometers per second, and so on. So now, what I want to talk to you about is the reciprocal of the Hubble constant. What is the meaning of the reciprocal? So if we reciprocate this, you've got T equals, this is known as the Hubble time, 1 over the Hubble constant. This describes to us the, the biggest age for the universe, okay? The age that it can't surpass that. So that's why the Hubble constant is so important for us to calculate. The units of this is seconds, or we could say even years. Now, it's kind of surprising when we first, when people hear this verse, because you say, how does reciprocating 71 kilometers per second per million parsecs, how does reciprocating that ends up with seconds? What happened to all of these units? So, um, well, first of all, if you look at this, this is a kilometer per second, and then a the megaparsec comes to the denominator here, mega parsec. So in reality, megaparsec is a, a unit of distance, and a kilometer is a unit of distance. So unit-wise, they can cancel each other if we know the relationship between the megaparsec and the kilometer. Once we know the relationship with them, they pretty much cancel. So the units of the Hubble constant is in reality one over seconds. If we invert one over seconds, what we're going to get? Seconds or years. So let's now calculate what the Hubble time is. I'm going to end up with 1 divided by 71 kilometer times seconds times megaparsec. Okay? Now, what's the conversion? Well, we know that uh, one parsec is 3.26 light years, okay? One parsec is 3.26 light years, and one light year, I had proven earlier in another lecture, one light year is equal to 9.46 times 10 to the 15, and that's meters. That is sufficient for us to calculate the Hubble time now, okay? So the time Hubble is equal to uh, 1 divided by 71 kilometers times seconds times, uh, and then I'm going to say ten, the megaparsec, that's 10 to the 6 parsecs, 1 parsec, is 3.26 light years. One light year is 9.46 times uh, 10 to the 15 meters. And then in order to cancel the kilometer and the meter, I got to say 1,000 meter is one kilometer. So I multiply this by 1,000 me uh, meter is one kilometer. So what's going to happen? Meter going to cancel meter. Kilometer is going to cancel kilometer. Light here is going to cancel light here. Parsec is going to cancel parsec. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get an answer. Everything canceled. I'm going to get an answer in seconds. Okay, let's actually calculate this here. So you're going to get 10 to the 6th times 3.26 times 9. To calculate all of this, you end up getting... 4.3436 times 10 to the 17 seconds, which is the maximum age of our own universe. Remember, there could be other universes that were around before us and they are developing right now, but this is the maximum age of our universe. And now, if you want to change that to uh, years, you're going to say, 3,600 seconds is one hour, 24 hours is one day, uh, 365 and a quarter days are one year. So day, day, hour, hour cancel.